Hi everyone, this is Jason Edelman. In this video, we're going to look at how to get Ansible up and running to automate specifically Cisco Nexus um, switches. All right, so this is going to follow along a new GitHub project called NXOS-Ansible. The full link is found at the top, github.com slash jedelman8 slash NXOS-Ansible. So we're gonna, we're gonna bypass a lot of this detail for now, go straight into the readme, because the readme covers um, specifically how to get up and running. You know, we go over two options in here. The first is a manual install, which is what we're gonna cover in this video. And the second will be covered in a second video, which is how to get this up and running by using Docker. All right, so we're gonna, again, bypass some of the what is and keep that for reading material. And we're gonna go straight into option one, which is the manual setup. So in this, in this video, I'm gonna be using, uh, you know, somewhat you know, a somewhat fresh install of Ubuntu. I've only ran through this install on this machine, so technically it's not it's not truly fresh, but at the same time, um, you know, it, it for the most part, it was installed natively, right, just using a downloaded, you know, Ubuntu 14.04 image um, a couple days ago. You can also follow along here by using Cisco's all-in-one 1PK virtual machine. This is it's a free download as well. You can also use um, a Vagrant Ubuntu box. You can use Mac. If you're going to use Mac, anything like that, you should definitely follow Ansible's install steps as well because there might be a caveat or two along the way. But again, what I'm going to be showing here is, you know, is native for, um, for Ubuntu. Okay. So I'm going to try to go, go through this fairly quick in order to uh, save time. So first, we always want to pick the system. Next, we're going to do... Uh, sudo apt-get install python pip again I already had these installed on this machine and this will save time in the demo as well and again what I see here is going to be different than than what you see on your machine step 4 SSH I'm going to bypass that but I would recommend you installing it step 5 is at the Etsy host file. All right, so I don't have Sublime on this machine, so I'll be using Vim here, uh, sudo vim Etsy hosts, and mine's already edited here to save time, but you'll wanna, again, press I, insert here, and and basically, you know, modify this and include one or more of your switches. And this IP should be management zero of your switch. All right, so I'll just wanna escape, call in Q, call in WQ, and uh, now you should be able to ping your switches uh, by name, okay? Step six has a step just for Vagrant users. Next up is Cisco dependencies. This is the Python package that is required to use the actual modules that are used to automate Cisco, uh, Cisco switches. Do sudo pip install pi Cisco, that's CSCO. Again, I already have this installed, so uh, we're essentially good there. The next step goes into getting the proper modules and you know, getting the proper infrastructure to to work with Ansible, um, you know, for this video and for this project. So the first thing is we'll want to do is ensure it gets installed. All right, and it is. Now from there we can just copy, you know, copy the next few commands over. I'm being prompted because this is still a private project. By the time this video launches, it will be public, so you should not be prompted for this, okay? Clear that. Now we're gonna create a few new directories. We're now gonna relocate some files that were downloaded during the clone into their proper location. And this is described in a little more detail in the README, but we're essentially relocating Ansible.cfg, which has a flag set in there that will allow us to not have to always put gather facts equals false for every play in the playbook. And uh, so, you know, if you you know if you follow your own process, that flag will be you know be set manually yourself, or or just set you know the gather gather facts flag to false in, in each playbook. All right. Um, and then we're also relocating the contents of the library direct directory, which is all of our modules, 
into a directory called Cisco NXOS. So this is for the most part uh, going to really help by testing Ansible doc out, which is Ansible's built-in documentation. So if we were to do a quick ls here of what's in this directory now, we're going to see all of our modules. Okay, so I'll do an ls. So this is what they are right now and what you can configure. And there's more detail on this in the readme. But we can pick one of these for now. We'll do nxos underscore interface. So we can run ansible doc nxos interface. So we get built-in documentation on that module. So we can see what parameters are supported, you know, what it's supposed to do, you know, we see which ones are required and so forth. And again, the, the docs go through this in a little more detail. All right. So we're going to you know, come back to our instructions over here. The next step is optional, but I would recommend it for now is to, to move and relocate a file called dot net off. Next is we want to edit this file. So we're going to use that. We're going to use Vim again for this. So do vim.net off. The, the file is the YAML file. So it's got to start with three hyphens. And then Cisco Nexus must be here. So it's Cisco colon, next space, you know, next line, indent Nexus, then the credentials. I have to put my proper password in here. Don't tell anybody. But one, two, three, exclamation point. So you would put your credentials for your switches in this file okay now if you don't have the same name and password for all your switches then it, you know you could bypass this step and then you would basically just put the username and password um, as parameters for each um, for each module and each task all right and we'll see that further down in the readme file as well on github but we're going to exit now call on wq clear out of here Docker is covered in another video. Now we want to prepare the switches here. All right, so we're just gonna exit out of here. And this, there's two there's two main steps here. One is just turning on feature NX API, and then do you know, doing a quick show on it. So show NX API, just to make sure that it's listening on port 80. 443 isn't supported yet for these modules, so port 80 must be. Uh, must be listening for NX API in order for this to work. As stated earlier, it must be management zero that you're connecting to to run Ansible or anything against NX API. Another IP address will not work yet. All right, the next step goes into understanding Ansible. This goes into Ansible terminology on playbooks, plays, host files, and tasks, and all of those things. But in, in the effort to to get the first playbook up and running fairly quick, what we want to do is just come in here, take this playbook, we're going to copy it, and we're going to stick with this name here, nexusautomation.yml. So we're going to you know, come back in here. We're now going to navigate into our directory. And this is going to create the file for us as well, sort of in nexusautomation.yml. Press I. We're going to make this a little bit larger to make it easier to read. And we now see here a few different things, but name is totally arbitrary. This is text displayed as you run through the playbook. We're going to be automating a single device in this playbook. And this device is a device that's found in the Ansible inventory file. So this is this N9K1, which inadvertently does map back to what's in the Etsy host file. So the host in the playbook can map back to a single host or to a group such as spine or leaf, okay? An Ansible connection local equals local is also a requirement. If you don't have this, you'll need the connection local flag set in each play as well, okay? There's three tasks here that we're gonna run through. Each task uses the NXOS underscore interface module. And the first one, we're using the with items iterator, and this loops through this list placing whatever is in the list into item. Double curly braces uh, means this is a variable here. And then we're gonna set each interface to the default state. And we're gonna pass in the name coming from the Ansible inventory file that is found here. So we're gonna just pass in a 9K1 so we know what device to connect to and to make the change. The second two tasks, again, you know, the same module is being used, Ethernet 1.1, setting the description, configuring the mode to layer three, 
And in the last task, we're basically just doing the admin down to Ethernet 2.1. So we'll save this. Exit out of here. We'll do Ansible playbook minus I, especially the hosts file that we're going to use. And this is the Ansible inventory file called hosts. Nexus automation. Playbook's executed. You know, we see these changes being made. We, you know, come back to the switch. We now see each change. We see a layer three port, proper description. We see Ethernet 2.1 is shut down. We could also, you know, run this with a minus V for verbose. And this will actually show what commands are being sent to the device along with the current state, proposed state, and existing state after the execution. And so we can see here what commands are being sent, for example, and this really helps in, in troubleshooting. So if we wanted to, uh, we, you know, we could open Vim back up and say, um, you know, we also want to, you know, we also want to make, you know, this NL3 port hypothetically, you know, exit out of here. And we'll keep our both off. So this executes one more time. Ethernet 2.1, the default interface is there. And show run and Ethernet 2.1. We now have an L3 port there as well. Okay. And these modules are item potent, meaning a change is only being sent if it's required to get the device into its desired state. Um, that said, these are being changed for every run because the first task in the playbook is set the default to the interface. So that in essence is always making the change required and making it nice for demo purposes. All right. So this is, you know, this is the first video that we're showing how to, you know, get Ansible installed and up running for automating Cisco Nexus switches. In the next video, we'll look at how to do this um, by using Docker. All right, if there's any questions, if you want to contribute, you know, feel free to open an issue or pull request, uh, what have you. And, and again, on Twitter, I am um, Jay Edelman 8. All right, thanks for watching.